Welcome back to the Hurley Pro Trestles. Round three underway. Big Pete's coming your way. We've got the current world number three, Gabriel Medina, hitting the lineup up against a local boy, a wild card in Tanner Gadowskis. Uh, you know, it, it just looked like John uh, lost control of uh, what he's really, what's been helping him this year. That was kind of the John John of old right there. Some silly mistakes, but during the break, Gabriel uh, Medina going for a big old reverse and coming unstuck. So uh, we'll see if Tanner can capitalize on that round dog. And right here, another left-hander. And a nice snap. Tanner's got great fundamentals on the rail. Uh, this is a guy that can mix it up. He can go for airs or he can stick to the power game. Great flow on this wave right there. And wow, my first gut instinct is that's got to be an excellent score for Tanner. And now we've got Medina up. Live action here. That explosive backhand going to work on a nice looking right hander. But nice start there for Tanner. We kind of missed the top of that wave from Gabby. Let's see what he did. Sizing up that wave, uh, so I like that. Setting up the tempo, so a nice smooth snap for Gabriel. This guy is so smart. Always tends to pick apart his waves as efficient as possible. So very good uh, rhythm right there. Just slightly hung up on that last snap. I don't know, you know, I'm thinking Tanner got the best of the two. He's shaking uh, up the ratings, and uh, that's his job. So I like that. You know, and there's some, there's some oomph behind, uh, some meaning behind Brett's surfing because, uh, you know, he's got a lot to prove falling off last year. 8.83 right here uh, for Gabriel Medina. So, you know, you talk about purpose. This guy trying to take over number one. And here he is without priority, just keep busy on the inside. I feel like France is, is probably Medina's best contest too. Just always turns up there. I don't think he's ever missed the finals. His worst results a quarter. Uh, here he goes now into that air wind. And he is hanging on with everything he's got to ride out of this move. Desperate times for Gabriel. I don't think that's going to score too well. Uh, a pretty patchy recovery there as we see Tanner now with an opportunity to seize the lead. Doesn't need a lot. We've seen him get into the excellent range. He's actually gone perfect on the back end already in this contest in the first round. Uh, I agree with you. I don't think the judges are going to be impressed with all that recovery time from Gabriel Medina. So that's going to be a throwaway score. It's always a crowd pleaser. You know, it's cool to see the guy wrangle with his board. Let's see what wrong here. The air kind of got underneath his board and um, he lost contact with it right around here. You can see that back foot came unstuck. And once that back foot got detached from the deck, Ronnie, uh, you know, his balance was thrown off. He kind of went back, you know, behind the surfboard. Um, you know, it's cool that he fished the board back underneath him, but the judges won't be impressed. Unbelievable. Just his ability to recover <laughs> when he falls off like that. He, he is, uh, shares that. He shares that enthusiasm for, uh, you know, totally refusing to fall with Kelly Slater. Those guys always fish their board back under their feet. Um, to pick this wave apart a bit, just missed timed a little bit on his third turn. You know, he had to wait for it and come back around, but that was really crisp to finish it. So sorry, the second turn put him behind just a little bit. That wave was running really fast. I thought maybe he'd go for a projection move so that he'd get back to the green wall. But I like the fact that he settled into the slower tempo and said, okay, screw it. I'm not going to make it back out to the front, but at least I'm going to nail this last maneuver. The way the, the results are, and scores are falling at the moment, if Kelly can go on to win this contest, it, it's going to become a lot more attainable. It really is, uh, you know, especially with John getting that 13th right now. It's all about this kid right here. If he moves on to the quarters or better, look out. Well, let's see what he can do with this right. Nice first turn. Really whipping that tail through the lip, exploding through the pocket once again and getting a big finish with a reverse. Hangs onto it. Three moves. Right behind him, though, Tanner Gadowskis to the cheer of the crowd. He's going to get a nice wall too, typically throughout the event. The second and third wave in the sets have been stronger. Tanner's going to get a lot more green face to work with here. As he drives up over this end section and kicks the tail. Not too bad at all, a great exchange here with just over 10 minutes remaining. So these guys getting a lot of cracks at it. And uh, you know, Gabriel Medina, let's, uh, let's take a look at this wave again. Really try to factor in uh, what kind of score they can drop. Solid first turn, even getting the tail to release. Another nice connection snap. 
and then a closing spin. A little flat on that last spin, so you know I don't think that's one of those maneuvers that's going to really freak the judges out and automatically give him an excellent score. I think it's borderline excellent. And out the back, same kind of thing, a lot of connecting turns. This wave is pretty fast for, for Tanner. So he's forced to really keep his momentum down the line, but I like that closing finish there. Zero mistakes from Tanner. I don't know, it might be a whitewash. It looks like similar scores there. He needs an 8.34 to get the lead. Tanner Gadowskis can improve his situation by getting rid of an 8.5, and here we go. Medina up once again as we still wait for the scores from that last exchange. And he is going to go on the attack here. A huge fin release, backhand snap. Transitioning through to this inside now. And needs more. There's a bigger hit. And he just continues to attack this pocket with a nice vertical approach. There's the fist pump. Wow. Asking the judges, what do you think of that? Well, there it is, Ronnie. His last score dropping in under what he needed, but that wave came right in the nick of time. And you need a little bit of that luck to, to turn these heats. Again, a lot of opportunities. This was easily the best wave we've seen come through the lineup. A long wall, perfect line, and it was a big set wave. Watch the spray on this turn right here. Hooks it, and that went oh, past the screen right there. And another one right here, even higher spray. So, uh, you know, Gabriel Medina is a magician at having perfect timing. You know, he never gets too far in front where he has to cut back. He puts himself uh, right in a pocket where he can get those big old hooks and throw a lot of spray out the back. So um, this easily feels like it's going to be the highest score of this heat. and He should take control, Ronnie. Seven minutes remaining. The way this battle has unfolded has been very fun because Medina hasn't really had any rampy sections where he could create a really big point of difference with those aerial moves. So he's been forced to match it with Tanner, one of the form backhand surfers of the event. And he stepped up in a big way on this ride. He really did. And he still, he, he kept a bit of a slower tempo, but the wave was an absolute dream. Uh, you know, a lot of the waves today, the pace has been fast and then slow and then fast, so it kind of keeps you on your toes and you're just connecting your maneuvers. But that wave slowly peeled down the point and it allowed him just to tee off. So I would not be surprised if this goes past a nine. Well, the scores have just come in, Barton. An 8.3. Oh he needed an 8.34. Not enough what? to turn the heat. Yeah, I share your shock, Barton. I what? guarantee you right now, Gabriel Medina is tripping. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'm not sure exactly what the judges were thinking. I, you know, I did mention that it wasn't the quickest surfing we've seen all day. So, you know, maybe the fact uh, that he, you know, he kind of took his time, the judges really kind of nailed him for it. But I honestly thought that was going to be at least a nine minimum. Yeah, there's no way uh, that Gabriel's was definitely better than Tanner's. 8.4, no question in my mind. Still some live action happening here. Just over two minutes to go and no one gets rid of baggage and a bad taste in their mouth like Medina. He continues to push and fight for the result he needs here. He's not going to get it on that wave, so he's still got time, just over two minutes to go. And there is just one minute remaining here, Ross. He's still got an opportunity, even without priority. We know how dangerous he can be. And Tanner is going to pass this wave up. So let's see what Medina can do. He's got some huge moves he can go to. He floats this one. He's going to fall. 45 seconds to go. Here on the point, but it was nice and steep, and he tagged it, and he threw a lot of spray. It's a, that's where the shock is coming from. Well, he's got another wave here, but this wave tapering off pretty quickly. 25 seconds to go. And Medina, clearly frustrated, as we see Tanikodowskis, who has just delivered a couple of devastating backhand snaps to this right-hander. The crowd is making plenty of noise from the local boy, and we have seen the one, two, and now number three on the Jeep leaderboard fall out of the mix here at Trestles. Now this is big, and you can guarantee Gabriel Medina is going to be over the top frustrated. Right now he's got all kinds of conspiracy theories going through his head. Uh, it's going to be a very tough pill to swallow. The heat score total solid for both competitors. Nothing separating these two, but it is Tanner Gadowskis who's marching on through to round four. 